Hi there. Imagine you are working in an international organization where you are trying to implement event-driven data architecture. However, you are still working on your Microsoft Power BI dashboards or reports via scheduled refresh. That means you are refreshing through Power BI Service Portal, either on-demand or maybe you are using XML activity over there. But in order to achieve event-driven data architecture completely, you have to refresh your Power BI data sets once your data load has been completed. You don't need to do anything manually over there. You don't need to use XML connectivity. So how can you do that? Well, in this video, I'm going to let you know how you can achieve event-driven data architecture and you can refresh Microsoft Power BI datasets via API. So if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. My name is Ajay Kumar and I create all the contents on Microsoft Power BI and Azure. And in this video, we are going to talk about how we can use Azure Data Factory to refresh Power BI datasets. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. Before starting, there are certain prerequisites that you need to complete in order to complete this task. Apart from that, what you have to do, first of all, you have to come on the Microsoft documentations where there are certain APIs that you can have a look, whether you want to refresh one data set or you want to refresh a data set in group. So right now I'm in a refresh data set in group page over here. You can find this is going to be your HTTP address where you would find this post URL, which we are going to use over here as it is only what we have to do. We have to replace over here group ID with our workspace ID. And then we have to replace dataset ID with our dataset ID. That's all you need to do. And you have to use post because it's a post URL. So please copy this from here. And then in that part, you can replace your group ID and dataset ID. But where are those? That's another question. For that, you have to come on your Power BI service portal like I'm over here. Then you have to go to your particular workspace where your dataset resides. In my case, it's in my development workspace. For example, if I come here and this is my development workspace. On the top bar, you will find this workspace ID. After groups, this is going to be your workspace ID. That means between the groups and the list, whatever ID you find, this is your workspace ID. Now, second question is over here where we can find our dataset ID. So in my case, this is my dataset. So just click on this dataset. As soon as you are going to click, you will find certain other information over there. So in order to get the dataset ID, you have to come over here and there you can see this is your dataset ID. So you can copy it and keep it. You can update that API URL with your group ID and dataset ID. Group ID is your workspace ID only, nothing else. Now what you have to do, you have to go to your Microsoft Azure portal. Here you have to create one data factory. I have already created one, but it is very simple to create a data factory. So what you have to do, you have to type data factories only over here, data factories, and here you will find this option. So click on this. So once you are on this page, you have to click on this create button. And here you have to select your subscription, your resource group, and then name of the data factory. If you don't know how to create a data factory, what is a data factory, etc., I'm going to provide you a link in the description section and you can watch that video to get all the necessary knowledge about Azure Data Factory, how to use it, what is it, how to create it, etc. So please don't forget to watch our tutorial on Azure Data Factory. Okay, let's go back. Over here, I have already created one Azure Data Factory with the name BCP Demo ADF that you can see. Please remember that this name of your data factory is going to be your service principal or managed identity. You need to copy this and keep it with you. Once you do that, after that, you have to launch the studio. That means where you can create your pipelines. So let me do that. So far, what we have done, we have created Azure Data Factory. We have also a URL or API URL link where we have updated our workspace ID and dataset ID. The next step would be to add your service principal into a security group and how to do that. If you haven't watched our video on how to create a service principal account in Azure, please watch that video. I'm going to provide you a link in the description section. This is really important. In order to add your service principal or your data factory name to your security group, you have to go to Active Directory. For that, you have to go back on your Azure portal. Here, click on Active Directory. Once you click over here, you have to come under this enterprise application. Just remove all the filters so that you are under now all the applications. 
Once you are over here and once you have removed all the filters, you have to just paste the name that you copied. That is your Azure Data Factory name, which you can see it's over here. Now, in the next step, as I mentioned, we have to add this service principle into one security group, which I already have. So for that, I'm again going to go back on my Active Directory. Over here, I will come under group and here I'm going to type service principle. Since I have only two, so I really don't need to go or search for that one. So what I can do, I can simply click on this service principle and here I have already added this account. But in case you don't know how to edit, I'm going to show you. So you can see that there are two members. So go on this members tab over here on your left hand side. Over here you would find there are already two members. But if you have to add yours, what you can do, you can simply click on this add members. Here you can search it, the same name which is already appearing there. So it's going to appear over there and you can select it and it's going to be add similar to that what you can see over here. Now the next part would be to add this service principle AD group to your Microsoft Power BI workspace and also under the tenant settings. So what we are going to do, we are going to copy this security group, go to your Power BI portal. First of all, go to your desired workspace. You have to click on this access button and here you have to grant the admin permission to this group. So select admin and then you can simply add it, which I have already done it. You can see over here at the bottom of this naming list. All right. The second step would be you have to go on the admin portal. You must have access on the admin portal. Otherwise, you have to ask someone from your team who has the Power BI admin portal access. Over here, you have to go to the developer settings. So for that, you have to scroll it down. Find the developer settings. So over here, you can see that we have developer settings over here. Under the developer settings, you have to go to allow service principle to use Power BI APIs because we are going to use APIs and for that we need our service principle. So come here and you can add over here. Like you can see that I have already added. Remember that your workspace should be on V2 workspace. Otherwise, it's not going to work. By the way, all the new workspaces that you are going to create are automatically going to be the V2 workspace, not the classical workspace. If you are confused about the V2 and the classical workspace, you can check the Microsoft documents or you can simply Google it. You will get all the information. All right. Now let's go to our workspace over here. You can see this is my data set. And if I'll go to the history of this data set refresh, you will find that over here, the last refresh happened on 15.03. That means 3 o'clock, 3 minute PM. Now, the time over here right now is 3 o'clock 46 minute. So we have to see whether we can do it successfully or not. But before that, we have to do one more task. We have right now created only Azure Data Factory. We have to create the pipelines as well. For that, I'm going to go back to my Data Factory. Over here, this is my Azure Data Factory. Here, I have to create my pipeline. So click on this and click on Create Pipeline. Here, you can see that I have already one pipeline, but I want to create a new one. So you can see that there is one number appearing, but I need to create one more pipeline. So create new pipeline over here. As soon as I click, I need to go under the activities and I have to select the web activity over here. So let me select web activity and drag and drop over here. Now we are going to create one web activity under one pipeline. You can also rename it pipeline if you would like to, but I'm going to keep it like that. Now select this web activity. And if you would like to zoom, you can zoom it so that you can see that it's a web activity. You can rename it if you would like to. For example, refresh Power BI dataset. That's all I'm doing over here. Once you do that, there are certain other fields. You don't need to select that. However, if you want to secure your output input, you can check those box, which is very important. Now go to the settings and here the very first is the URL. That means the API URL that you just copied from here, this one, and you have updated your data sets and workspace ID, you have to paste it over there. So come back here. Let me copy that and paste it over here quickly. Now I'm pasting it over here. So I have copied and pasted my URL. That means my API URL. The method is going to be the post one. As I mentioned over here in the data set API as well, you can see that the method is the post one over here. Now go back and here is the body. So you have to write what should be in the body. So if you will come here, you can see that there is going to be the body part. So this is a request body part. So please use that. But over here in our case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just write this one. 
hello team pcp or you want to notify failure or etc please use those documentation and provide it over there in my case i'm not going to do anything over here now coming to the authentication part since we are using the system managed identity so that's the option we are going to choose over here system managed identity and here we have to also type the source that means so in our case we have to just use this one analysis.windows.net slash power bi slash api so that's the resource you have to use in your web activity over here that's all you need to do after that you really don't need to do anything so let's recap all those steps before trying to run it first of all what we done we created one azure data factory we copied the name of the azure data factory and then we went to the azure active directory over there under the manage applications we found our azure data factory name because this is not just a name it's your service principle and later on we copied that service principle ad group and we added that into our power bi workspace as an admin and as well as under the developer settings on power bi portal once that completed then we created a data pipeline and in that pipeline we created one activity that is the web activity and here we provided all the necessary information so that's all we did as of now now i'm gonna run this in debugging mode in debugging mode also it's gonna run it and we can see whether our data set has been refreshed or not so let me click on this debug option over here let's wait now you can see the status is in progress now let me refresh it and here you can see that this has been run successfully at this time 3 51 pm now let me go back on my power bi data set let's go to that workspace and here you can see that this has also been refreshed at 352 so let's check the history as well whether that has been run successfully or not so here you can see that via api i have run it successfully at this time so my data set has been refreshed successfully so guys this is it this is how you can use azure data factory pipelines to refresh your power bi data set via api now if you are wondering how you are going to use this in your day-to-day -day cases or while implementing event-driven data architecture guys you just need to add this web activity at the last point of your data load data pipelines that means you can concatenate either two different data pipelines or you can edit the existing data pipeline where when your last activity or data activity or data load activity finished after that you are gonna run this one that's how you can refresh your all the power bi data sets via power bi api and azure data factory in case you have multiple data sets you can use for each loop etc and your data engineers are very well versed about how to do that I hope now you have clear understanding about how to refresh Power BI data sets via Azure Data Factory. If you have any question and concern, please don't forget to let us know. You can comment in the comment section and also don't forget to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates. See you in the next video.